Hello again everyone in Maple Looning Zone. I'm about to read you chapter three of Time Travelling with a Hamster. It is actually half past ten at night. I hope you guys aren't still awake, but it's okay for me to be. I'm old enough to be up this late. Now I'll just read the last couple of sentences from chapter two. I nod and he scoots off on his bike, not even waving all of which makes it a very unusual morning indeed. Chapter 3. 12 things I know about Grandpa Byron. Number 1. His full name is Byron Ramat Chanduri Roy and his birthday is on New Year's Day, although he never celebrates it. Ugh, why celebrate getting one year closer to death, he once asked me. It's just passing time. It's really not important. He still gets me birthday presents though, so he can't be that serious. He's around 60 or so, but he looks much younger, apart from his nearly white hair. Number two. He has got the most awesome memory, and I mean like it's unbelievable. From the age of 10 until he came to England, he studied under some Indian guru who taught him all those meditation tricks, and it means he can remember absolutely anything. He's never forgotten anyone's name that he's ever met in his life. Number three. He was born in a part of India called Punjab, and his mum and dad sent him to Britain in the 1960s because there was a lot of fighting there. Some people call it the swinging 60s, but Grandpa Byron said he didn't see much swinging in Wall's End. Number four. He lived with an auntie and uncle, but they died yonks ago, and I never even met them. Number five. He married Grandma Julie in 1972. I know that because he told me that a song called Without You by Nielsen was number one, and I looked it up on the internet. Grandma Julie died before I was even born. Number six. Grandpa Julie's parents didn't come to their wedding. Grandpa Byron says they were too busy. That seems really odd to me. Perhaps they were racist and didn't like her marrying Grandpa Byron. Everyone was a racist in 1972, apparently. Number seven. He didn't always dress in yellow robes. Actually, he still doesn't always. But when Dad died, he went away for a while, for a while, sorry, for months, Mum said. And when he came back, he had grown a beard and started wearing the long robes. The beard didn't last long, though. He said it made him itch. Number eight. He wrote a book while he was working in a factory in North Shields. He would write in it in the evenings on a typewriter, which is kind of like an old fashioned computer, but with no memory. Just a keyboard and printer in one, which actually is pretty cool. No one would publish it in England, so it was published in India. Number nine. His right arm got wrecked in a fireworks calamity of all things. He was setting off for a big display and part of the metal rib that they were resting on had a loose bolt or something and the whole thing came down and crushed his arm. He can't use it much. And it looks a bit weird, kind of twisted all over to one side. He got some money from the insurance company and he stopped working at the factory. Number 10. He put some of his money into the first tandoori restaurant in the area called the Spice of the Sands on the Colvercott Seafront. It's still there, but it's run by some Bangladeshis now and serving much nicer food, said Grandpa Byron once. But he was laughing when he said that. Number 11. He won a trophy from the factory when he was in a talent show with the other workers. Everyone else was singing or telling jokes. And one guy could imitate the voices of all the bosses brilliantly. But Grandpa Byron just did some memory tricks. And guess what? He won. Someone shuffled a pack of cards and read them all out. And Grandpa Byron remembered them all in order. He told me 
that was level one stuff. In other words, not even remotely difficult. Number 12. He doesn't own any photographs. He says the best pictures are in his head and that taking photographs is just plain lazy. And that's the end of chapter three. Well, I hope you enjoyed it, children. I enjoyed sharing that with you. And as always, take care, stay safe, and hopefully see you soon. Night-night.